Hello everybody and welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. My name is Phoenix and once again I am joined with one of my lovely co-hosts, a uh, nice old regular, my good old friend Jolene. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, you are a very much a regular person. I, I guess so. Yeah. I'm not a creature. What? <laughs> Luckily. Huh? Huh? You're like a shadow demon. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyway, no. that's crazy. You're like three foxes in a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, three gerbils in a trench coat. Oh, my apologies. My bad. God. Occasionally a possum, but we won't talk about that. Okay. <laughs> the possum's just an occasional <laughs> one. <laughs> but, um, today... What are we reading today? Well, today was your choice, and so you mm -hmm. should introduce mm -hmm. it, since it was... It was oh, shoot. Okay. Yeah, you picked oh, it. Oh, I was prepared. I was prepared. I guess. I just switch it up. Today we're reading a Sanji X reader. Oh. <laughs> no, we're reading Zoro. And we're reading a Zoro X reader. We've actually read this one, but we've read part of this one before. Yes, it we is. Have. It is Sword and Shield. Oh my god, that's my favorite a Pokemon game. Nice. I know nothing of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fine. Right. Scarlet Sky Sports Eve. Yeah. We're, we're on chapter three. Yeah. How long has it been since we last read this thing? Uh, it's been so long. The, the last Maybe time like I've three seen months. This book lost to this monster. <laughs> uh, I just had the video up. I should remember when we. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> we haven't read this since either October or. Yeah, we haven't read this since October. Oh. Really? Because I remember it. I remember it updated a couple days after we read it, and it up the chapter three came out in November, early November. Oh. God. We'll see if we remember anything. Yeah, I don't fucking remember shit from like yesterday. I just remember it was good. Yeah, I mean yesterday. I don't remember shit from yesterday, man. I went to work, and and, and then I spawned back home, and then I spawned into bed, and then the next morning I spawned into awakeness, you know? That's just how life is. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, this is from one of my favorite authors, a Scarlet Skies 14. They have a Sanji one, which we might read at some point? Who knows? <laughs> Maybe. Depends um, who it lands on. Yeah. <laughs> Like you again, you're like, we're gonna need Zoro again. <laughs> <laughs> we just finish off. Yeah. Alright, uh, shit, where's my, where's my penny at? Not Fuck. the pen. you lost the penny? I can't believe my you. My drink, my diet diet Hold up, I have, I have a pack <laughs> of, of, of menthol pain relief gel. Why Would you I like me to flip that <laughs> instead? Uh, sure, one, I- I didn't think that's where you're going with that. Do you want the brand that. size or the bat? Wait, huh? One, I didn't think that's where you're going with that. And two, why did my brain auto-complete your sentence with a pack of Pokemon cards? <laughs> yes. Yeah, go ahead and flip You know what? Next shit. time. Next time, okay. Do you want the branded side or the the information, the drug facts? I'll be the drug facts. I'm reading first. I'm the branded side. All right. Should have grabbed the bottle of water, damn. Well, you thirsty? <laughs> you got a thirst to quench already? That's crazy. Oh my god. Couldn't be me. I'm not the one that's simping for fictional characters at all. You know. <laughs> of course, of course. You would never. Yeah, don't check my my repost list on Twitter. <laughs> or your profile pictures. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, your your what? Your archive of our own history. Oh my god, no! <laughs> it's just the same one tag. Oh god, really? Only one? I'm disappointed. Yeah, all I've been reading is Vox right now since he's really popular in my mind. Oh, uh, I there's so many better options. Anyway, what do you mean? What a beautiful day! I'm out in the courtyard, tending to the lilies in the warm sunlight of the afternoon. I'm dressed in one of my favorite gowns. It's a pale yellow that pales well pairs well with my complexion. Adorned in handmade white lace, it flows gentle in the gentle breeze as I give the flowers a flowers a drink of my from my watering can. I take a moment to admire the cottage bu butterflies as they graciously spread pollen, fluttering their tiny wings. So little yet play such a large part in our world. 
it's really fascinating. Magnolia, come quick! It's mother. She's shouting at me. I gaze up from the rose bushes. Your suitor has just arrived. Wipe that filthy dirt off your hands and get in here. Coming, mother! As I hastily get up, I accidentally scrape my finger on a rose thorn. I wince, seeing a small droplet of blood condensate condensing on my fingertip. I can see my reflection within its crimson. I can't have my betrothed see me so disgusting, so I wipe it off on the grass. A celestial dragon should not be seen as rugged in any way. Lifting my skirt, I hurry to the foyer of the De Beauvoir estate, my home. My heels clack against the marble tile as I run. I must hurry before my parents become furious. Mother rushes to me. What did I tell you about being in the garden, Magnolia? She asks, scanning my image from, from head to my toes to make sure I look perfect. That is work for the slaves. You should not be around all that dirt. It is unbecoming to people like us. I apologize, Mother. She beat my face with a powder puff. I almost sneezed from the white cloud. I'd hate to see the lilies wilting. Then we just get rid of the gardener and get a better one. It's as simple as that. Nothing you should bother your pretty head with. Now chin up, just as we practice. She's just my posture, smacking me with her on her hip and back. I remain silent until a servant's voice echoes through the grand hall. Presenting his lordship, the Ro Robert J. De I Devereux of the Celestial Dragons. Everyone stood up at attention at a tall man decorated with gold and jewels proudly enter entering the estate. He wore the traditional noble attire of a protective suit. Over all that glitter and gold have an entire entourage of slaves following his path. He takes my mother's hand and greets her as any gentleman should. It is such a pleasure finally meeting you all. His voice was strong but kind. I kindly thank you for welcoming me to your lovely home. Sir Devereux, it is an honor, my mother smiled. Please, you may call me Robert, the noble chuckled. Oh no, he's looking at me now. I cover my face highly with my fan. My, my, you are truly a spectacle, I gasped as he suddenly felt my hand being taken and given a kiss. I removed my fan to see Robert kneeling before me with the most piercing royal blue eyes. How lucky, man, how lucky am I to have you as my bride? I can sense my mother's eyes stabbing into my body, waiting for my response. I look forward to the day, I reply, pleasing my mother. Damn, we were even, like, Format. sold off as a wife? <laughs> yeah, guess our parents don't love us. Yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, this is probably what it's like to be part of the 1%, right? <laughs> Just arranged marriage they probably got... power. I don't know. I don't know, probably in one piece, I... yeah. Bad. I'm not that far. <laughs> oh, you're not even by the celestial dragons. God damn, girl. We're not gonna get. We're not gonna talk about it, girl. <laughs> I'm all the way in like I'm Holy Island. Okay, last time I saw you, you were you had like just finished the Alabasta. Anyway, w what, um, where'd you leave off? <laughs> um. Anyway, well now she proudly threw up. <laughs> you two venture to the courtyard so you can get to know each other. I'll have someone deliver you some tea. As my mother walks away, she grabs my collar firmly and whispers in my ear behind her fan. Don't you dare mess this up. I nod my head understanding, and Robert and I venture back outside. I'm relieved to be out of, out of that dense atmosphere. Here you are, my dear. He snaps a finger. A slave dashes over to me and crouches on all fours. I give the man a look confused. A, a look of confusion. A seat for you. Repulsive. Thank you. I take a seat anyway against my better judgment. He seats himself upon a slave as well. He stares at me from across the garden table as I flutter my fit. Hold up. If they have a garden table, why don't they have chairs? You know what? I was about to say so. Maybe they just... Like, are they not rich enough for chairs? Yeah. I mean, they're rich enough for slaves, but not chairs. Wow. They really need a better investor money. Yeah. <laughs> Spend all this money Jesus on like gems Christ. and jewels and slaves, but you can't afford a couple of chairs, SMH. <laughs> he stares at me across the garden table as I flutter my fan gently at a butterfly's wing. I follow my mother's instructions and don't speak until unless spoken to. I must say, your estate possesses a lovely garden, he starts. Yes, indeed is my favorite place to be, I say. I can understand why. 
Then, he then leans closer to me. He smells too, of too much cologne. So, tell me about yourself. Who is it I am to wed? There isn't much to say. That is a lie. I know a lot about myself, in fact. Men don't appreciate you talking too much, though. I've lived here comfortably with my parents all my life. I'm thankful for being part of such a wonderful family. Now I can be thankful for, for becoming part of yours. It'll be splendid. It'll be a splendid wedding for both of our families, he smiles. The de Beauvoir and the Devereux will become one house, a wonderful union of status. I couldn't agree more. Ser servants intervene with, arrive, ah, uh, gosh, servants arrive with tea, served in decadent china on a gold platter. I take my cup and daintily take a sip. For the next few minutes, I sat and looked pretty while Robert continued to rant about his family's history. Inside my head, I drift off into my thoughts. At least, he, at least he is bad looking, with hair meticulously combed back and a nice shape of face. His large eyes were like deep pools, rich in color. While he was boring, he didn't seem too terrible. He was older than me. He, 27, and me, oh, 17. No. Our wedding would take place the day I turned 18 years old, and I continue to fake laugh at his remarks, secretly becoming more interested in the butterflies than him. That is, until he speak. He started speaking of pirates. That that age gap. That age gap. God. She's seventeen. Damn. We're we're seventeen. Damn, dude, can't you find someone your own goddamn age? They're rich. They're selling her off. Yeah, I like how our our ears perked up when he mentioned pirates, and he's like, "Oh, you mentioning like Zorro, that like that hot little like green hair man." That hot guy. Yeah, that one hot that we guy. We met a from couple the... chapters ago. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Get you with it, y'all. Anyway, and get ready for this. A pirate fleet. Really thought they would take down my father's ship and steal our treasure. The stupid fools were taken out, taken out by our guards, of course. But isn't that just unbelievable? Scum like that think they could be in the vicinity of us. They were asking to get themselves killed, stupid pirates. What were they like? I asked. The pirates. You would be appalled. The pirates are filthy, disgusting creatures. They're vermin that plague the seas and cause nothing but strife. The wolf would be better without them. Yeah, but like if Is they had like tough? green hair and like three swords, that that's that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the exception. Yeah, <laughs> of course. And, like maybe the blonde hair he... with weird eyebrows. <laughs> does it does Zora only shower like once a week? A little stinky. Yeah, he's a little stinky boy. A little stinker. Anyway. <laughs> Is that so? I set my teacup down, then out of nowhere, Robert jumps back, and it's it fright, falling off his slave of a chair. What is it? I ask concerned. Is that blood on your finger? He points towards my hand. Oh, my, oh goodness. I take an napkin and put pressure on the wound. I notice I've stained my teacup with a finger pin of fresh blood. So sorry about that. I pricked myself on a rose bush earlier. The cup must have reopened. Stay away from me, filthy woman! My eyes widen in shock at Robert's response. It's just a small cut, I said, walking around in public with an open wound like that. How disgusting. Robert calls it over another servant and orders him to cut up orders him to seal up the cut. I watch the servant quickly bandage my finger. Inside I start to feel a growing sense of frustration toward this whole situation. A grown man scared of a little blood, and to think this is what I'll be marrying. For years I've read books of plenty of valiant men that existed. Fearless, smart, strong, men that have been part of magnificent battles and have seen such thrilling sights. They were not afraid of a little blood. They were brave and fought with all their struggles with fought all their struggles with strength and courage. To me, that was something I admired far more far more than this sad man grovelling on the ground at the sight of the tiniest of cuts. Is she dead? I can't tell. Whispering voices shattered, slowly licking rose from a dream. Poke her. See if she moves. What? No way. Come on, chicken. Muck, muck, muck. <laughs> the whispers become more I feel, like, I feel like this is Luffy and Usopp. <laughs> Literally so funny. I'm starting to recollect things. I'm sorry. No problem. <laughs> the whispers were becoming louder, making the woman's head throb with an aching pain. Her eyes tightened from the immense headache. 
I'm not a chicken. That's it. Rock, paper, scissors, and the loser has to poker. You're on. As the, <laughs> as the two voices settled out in their game, Rose's anger was rising quickly. Rock, paper, scissors. Haha, <laughs> you lose. No fair, you cheated. Nuh uh. Yeah, uh huh. <laughs> Rose is finally sad it. <laughs> the, the two voices were sent back flying, startled by the girl's sudden output at first and crashed into the wall. Ow! Son of a bitch, my head! Rose groaned as she slowly rose from her sleep, clutching her head. Zombie! The two boys flailed their arms in fear, running in circles at the sight of the dead woman coming alive. Don't eat us! I said shut up! Rose flung her arm, releasing an intense spiritual blast of energy towards the boys who were running like chickens with their heads cut off. My head's gonna explode if you keep yelling like that, you idiot! Well, 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 look who has finally joined us in the living. A large shadow fell over Rose as a familiar stoic voice spoke to her. About time you woke up. Rose lifted her hand to shield away the blinding light of the afternoon sun that stung her eyes. And who are you? Come on. You were that drunk that you don't even remember me? Colors had finally started to fill in the shape of the shadow until a familiar set of handsome brown eyes and moss green hair appeared above her. Oh, I think I remember you. You're, you're the, uh, you're the pirate hunter I danced with at the bar, right? Rose muttered. Yep, sure I am. The man crouched down, meeting a groggy woman at eye level. A soft and precious smile grew on his face. How are you feeling? Like total shit. She winced. Her hands ran against wooden floorboards as she tried to regain her bearings. Where am I? What happened? You're on the Going Mary, my cruise ship. I let you crash here until you felt better. But it seems the captain and others were impatient and started the voyage before we woke up. Captain? Ship? Her eyes wandered, taking in the scene. The fog slowly decreased. A mast. A bow. A pirate flag that waved and danced in the wind. Seagulls called, caught as they flew through the open blue sky. Damn, she sighed. So you're telling me now I'm in the middle of the sea, stuck with a bunch of strangers? Carefully, she clutched a dagger, a dagger hidden and strapped against her thigh. What did you guys do to me? Do to you? What are you talking about? The swordman tilted his head in confusion. I just told you. I brought you here to crash until you were sober. And who is this captain of yours? That would be me. <laughs> I love Luffy. That would be me. A young man with a funny nose <laughs> appeared and stood between the Scarlet Woman. <laughs> oh wait, Usopp. Yeah. Tis I, Captain Usopp of the Usopp Pirates. Hey, cut it out, Usopp. I'm the captain. Another boy butted heads with the guy with the long nose and started to swing a fist preparing for a punch. <laughs> no way. As the captain of the Usopp Pirates, I order you to butt out. Long nose said <laughs> with his arms crossed. What? No, I'm the captain. <laughs> Knock it off, you two. Suddenly, the boys were forcefully bonked on the head and stopping their childish argument. I'm sorry about that. They're a couple of idiots. A young woman with fiery orange hair approached with a kind smile. Rose lifted an eyebrow. And who might you be? I'm Nami, the ship's navigator, she greeted. I see. Who are those knuckleheads? Rose asked her leave. She didn't have to endure any more yelling. Nami sighed. <laughs> pointing to the boys laying on the floor with bumps on their heads. That's Usopp, and that's Luffy. Nami, Luffy. Oh, I know you three. I remember now. Hmm? You know us? Yeah, I do. You're the true. You're the trio I saw in the pub. That guy Bellamy and his crew kicked your asses. The the girl shyly looked away. You saw all that. That guy was a total jerk, huh? The the boy in the straw hat sat up and laughed. From the back of his head, recovering from Nami's strike. Was this the same guy that got thrown out the window yesterday? How is he this high of spirits? Rose wondered. This is a really weird group of people. How did I end up here? Then, the boy reached out a hand bearing a white smile. I'm Luffy. What's your name? Rose hesitated to answer, but it didn't seem like it would be hard to kill him at all if they tried anything with her. I'm Rose. She shook her. She shook his hand. Say, your hair's pretty cool. Reminds me of my friend Shanks. You know him? Rose shook her head. Afraid not. Aside from what I've seen in the papers about him. Suddenly, Rose swayed and fell back down with a blood. She was still too dizzy from her hangover. Doors opened from the center of the ship. Make way! She needs water! A tiny voice entered the commotion. 
give the girl some space. Little girl. <laughs> and there's another goopy bit. Male voice. Where? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh god. The there's gang's more of all them. Here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my boy Sanji's over here now. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, there's more of them. Rose dreaded. Did she dare open her eyes? Just how many weirdos are on this ship? <laughs> here, you're dehydrated. Drink this. Rose Rose fluttered her eyes open and found herself looking face to face with a raccoon? A dog? A raccoon dog? What the hell? Could you just talk to me? Don't worry, I'm a doctor. The raccoon, <laughs> raccoon dog smiled with a glass of water in his hand. Or hoof. Here, take it. Um, thanks. I think I might be <laughs> I still might be blacked out. No way this thing just talked to me. Or did I accidentally take something? the hell happened last night? This never-ending fever dream. Her confusion only grew as she took hold of the glass and chugged it down. I'm too tired to consider all of this. You could, can hold your liquor, liquor just fine, huh? The stories went chuckled at the sorry state the woman was in. Watch it, pirate hunter. If you know what's good for you. Rose glared. I bet you don't even remember my name. Of course I do, Rose snarked. It was, uh, something like... Zul- <laughs> <laughs> Call a bozo! <laughs> Zorbo... Bozo... Bozo... <laughs> you could just call it... Uh, you could just call him Mosshead, another man's voice interrupted. Can it, curly brow? I didn't ask you. What? <laughs> what? She doesn't need to know any more about some shitty swordsman. <gasps> then caught a glimpse of blonde hair and a cloud of smoke. Oh my god, the girls are fighting right now. <laughs> <laughs> the green-haired pirate unshielded, unshielded, unsheathed, I can't read, the sword. But she doesn't know anything about some lousy skirt chasing cook. So get lost. Rose watched as the two men gnarled their teeth at each other as they taunted each other to swing the first punch. She could feel her brain cells quickly dying. I can't believe it. I'm stuck with this band of fools. She pinched her nose. Did you say your name was Rose? A mysterious feminine voice spoke. Robin! Oh my god, my girl! <laughs> I love <laughs> Robin appears, but suddenly I'm just like, wow. <laughs> like I'm twirling my hair. Yeah! <laughs> tuck hair behind ear. <laughs> Stop, how did you know? Because <laughs> I do that with my sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking box comes on from like has been, and I tuck my do the little tuck thing. <laughs> like, oh my god. Okay, question: What do you find? What do you define as a a young lady? Young lady. Um, I think probably around our age and whatnot. Like probably before mm -hmm. thirty. Like yeah, before thirty. Oh, okay. That's probably what I would define as like a young lady because she's like still in teens and I mean that that's like the like the ages of like adults mm -hmm. that are still trying to get their shit together, you know. Mhm. Mm I, I think that would classify as a young lady. Interesting. I was curious. The lady, the young lady looked up and saw a woman glancing down at her from the balcony with a curious look. Just how? Uh, yes. What a pretty name. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Robin. She actually seems normal. Her thought with relief. Could you tell me where the ship is heading? I'm sorry, I stowed away on your ship. We're heading toward the other side of the island. We're in search of information. Information? On what exactly? Rose asked. There certainly isn't anything exciting to find here in Jaya, I'll tell you that much. Robin smiled. We're looking for an island in the sky. The remark made more pieces of Rose's memories come back together. When... Just then, remembering why this trio of fools were in the pub in the first place. Really? You mean the Sky Island? Then all the is halted to an abrupt stop that the woman in red just said, What? Nami came closer to Rose in desperation. You've heard of the Sky Island? Only in books. I'm aware of the legend. Rose answered with a drop of sweat. You guys are seriously looking for it? Yeah. The boy in the, the straw hat said, proudly exclaimed, it sounds fun, don't you think? Rose stared at Slack Dog at the boy. She recalled the crew's complete confidence in searching for this fantasy island. It was captivating, to say the least. She had been around the people of Mock Town far too 
long. It was a city of lost and forgotten dreams. And the series of events she'd experienced in recent years had led her to it, almost as if it were fate. Hmm. Are you okay, Rose? Luffy asked. You guys are crazy, she said. And what if there is no Sky Island? What are you going to do? There is a Sky Island, Nami said, holding up her log pose. See? It points to the sky. There's got to be something up there. These guys are really for real? Before all the whiskey and sleepless nice nights. Rose Seagully did have a purpose for coming to Jaya years ago. Damn. Hey, you want to come with us? Luffy welcomely asked. Huh? The crew exclaimed. Come with you. Are you serious? Rose is astonished at the outlandish gesture. We just met. So, you seem nice. I second that. Luffy <laughs> Cook said with hearts in his eyes. And absolutely gorgeous. Luffy, you can't just keep letting people join the crew. Captain Usopp <laughs> shouted. We still got one scary leader on board. We don't need two. Relax. It'll be fine. <laughs> Relax. It'll be fine. Besides, she can't be bad if Zora brought her here. A big strong hand then placed itself on Rosa's shoulder. So, what do you say, ghost lady? You said you have nowhere to stay. We got a good band of misfits here on the ship. I am. Um, this was too overwhelming for Rose. One moment she was stuck in the hellish streets of Mock Town, drinking her stars away, and the next she would woke up to this wacky dream of talking raccoon dogs and crazy lunatics. Did she die last night? This all can't be real. Such a wonder in the world can't possibly exist. I think you'll get, get along here just fine. Rose's heart stopped as she looked up at the swordsman smiling down at her. A flash of memory came back to her seeing that smile. It was the same one she saw from that man that she sat next to on the park bench under the stars. The caring man who showed her the first bit of compassion she had experienced in a long time. The same smile that persisted even in hell itself. A bit of frost began to thaw at her heart. Now she remembers why she's here. She's here because of Zoro. Zoro, Luffy, Nami. She recalls the fire that she felt watching what happened in the pub. She'd never seen such conviction before. Something made her jump in front of that window that one day. A type of adrenaline took over her, forcing her to act to save that boy. But she didn't understand why at first, but maybe now she was starting to. An island in the sky does sound a lot more exciting than all that crap Bellamy was talking about. So are you coming? The crew stood eager, awaiting the girl's response. This was... Was this... The freedom she'd been looking for? You know what? Who cares if this is all a dream? Rose laughed and gave her answer. What the, what the hell? Why not? Yay! We're part of the crew! Part of the ship! Part Yay! Of the <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, this is this is from like post to oh my god? They drew Zora like that? Crazy. I'm a simp. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, they drew Zora like like what, huh? Chapter four, mm -hmm. like in Am I, like, Oh shoot, I gotta watch this ad. <laughs> the ad? You watch this on your phone? Oh my god. No. That's crazy. I don't know what you're talking about. On my thing, I hate all like Publix ads of like, get chocolate covered strawberries because like we're recording it's right before Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah, this is a frame from one of the uh the episodes. Um, oh, I thought you said like they like someone drew this. No. I mean they did, but I mean, I mean like fan art. Yeah, <laughs> I mean technically someone did draw. <laughs> All right, chapter four. Trust is a two-way street. Oh, it's crazy. Ooh. Hey, at least I get the the Sisanji on here while I completely flirt with Zoro as well. You can, you can have two. <laughs> there, there needs to be one where you could have both. Oh, uh, there's there's fan fictions. I don't know if they're any good, but there's fan fictions. There, there was, there's one that I read. It was a little messed up. We were dating. Mess oh, I'm scared. Well, well, tell me about it later. Okay. Well, it wasn't like fucked up, like dead dove don't eat. It was like, it was like a cheating kind of thing. Gosh. It didn't end good. <laughs> I'm like, why would you write this? <laughs> Uh, all right. Guilty pleasures, perhaps. Yeah, I guess. Two-way street, let's see. Rose's first day with the Straw Hat Pirates was hard to grasp, to say the least. Most of her first day was spent regaining her consciousness again from her night of binging. 
her legs dangled at the edge of the ship that afternoon, swinging back and forth as she fell deeper into her thoughts. For the last year and a half, she has been drifting as a shadow, lost in that stupid town of broken dreams. It was the first time in a long time that she she bore a clear mind that wasn't poisoned by alcohol, and it was quite uncomfortable. It felt like she was dropped in a blank canvas with no map to guide her anywhere. A blank canvas that stretched on forever, and her brush had no clear place to begin. Her eyes reflected the shivering waves as she faded into their soothing sound. She had intended to leave Mogtown a long time ago. Now, there she was, finally back on the open sea. It didn't feel quite real. She used to never stay on one island for too long so the government wouldn't find her. She could outrun the law, but she apparently couldn't outrun herself, and eventually her demons caught up with her. She had eventually become routine to drinking away the noise of her falling asleep. That way, the damn nightmares wouldn't haunt her as she slept. It was hard enough to keep the spirits at bay with their power, but it was a different story entirely. Damn it, so that's like, oh shit. It was a TV show that was like really popular in the day. I think it was like Umbrella Academy, where this like one of the like the kids could see ghosts. But like every time he blinked, they would just be like screaming at him for like help. So he would drink and do drugs oh to like numb the pain of like hearing all these dead people scream at him. Because it would be every time he like closed his eyes or like blinked, he would see these dead spirits like begging for help. Jesus. Yeah, you know. I remember this being a big thing. I think my mom even watched the fucking Umbrella Academy. But it was just like this group of six kids that all had different powers and one of them was seeing dead people. I don't know, that's what this reminded me of. Is, is, of like Rose's power. That's what it reminds me of. <laughs> I wish I could confirm, but I don't really watch many shows. Damn, it was way back in the day. Probably like beginning of high school maybe or while we were still in high school. That's probably- I'll, I'll ask my mom about that later, like, <laughs> you remember Umbrella Academy? <laughs> Ooh. She rubbed her face in an attempt to come back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Where even was she? Circling the coast of Jaya, apparently, as she could still see the coast in the distance. She clenched her stomach, continuing to fight the nausea. What she- What she had thought was a dream had turned out to be- fin Emphatically reality. Or was it? Sure, she had woken up in strange places before because of her drinking, but never like this. When she had first woken up, she could have sworn that that swordsman and all the pirates were a fabrication of some wild dream, but now she was wondering if this really was reality. The swaying of the ship, the sounds of the childish laughter on deck, the smell of lunch coming from the kitchen. Was, was it real? How are you feeling? A tiny voice interrupted Rose's teetering train of thought. Tired hazel eyes glanced over at the two adorable button eyes staring happily back at the young woman. Oh, hello, talking creature, she mumbled. I'm a reindeer, <laughs> the creature sternly corrected. Ah, oh, yes, of course, Rose sarcastically replied, rolling her eyes at the ridiculousness of the of the critter that stood on two legs in front of her. She closed her eyes and sighed, looking back at the ocean. Frankly, talking reindeer, I think I've com finally lost it. You seem alright to me, Rose! The reindeer smiled. Lightheadedness and dizziness are normal after drinking so much. Keep drinking water and you'll be okay. And you can call me Chopper. Chopper. Rose rotated herself to sit crisscross face to face with the little doctor. He looked like a normal reindeer. I'd be a bit raccoonish, but stood polished like a human. He stood on two legs and wore a aged pink hat. He reached out to touch his blue nose. Do you really think I'm sane? She asked, giving him a gentle pat, tap on his button nose. Trapper rubbed his nose a bit confused by the girl's words. Well, I can't say with complete certainty, but from the looks of you, I would say you're sane. Did she hit her head when she fought those thugs yesterday? Things just ke keep getting crazier and crazier ever since she first ran into these straw hats. 
Who was she right? Who was she right now? Getting psychological advice from a talking reindeer in a hat. <laughs> That's something a crazy person would do. Her head started to spin again. I I think I'm gonna walk around for a bit. The woman slowly rose and gave Chopper a lazy wave goodbye. He said something in a joyful tone to her, but she couldn't register what it was. Rose aimlessly began to pace around the deck in a daze. She began to grow agate. Wait. <laughs> I know this word. I, I should know it. Angst? Ad ad Agitated. Agitated. There we agitated. go. Agitated. <laughs> I'm smart. <laughs> I like how I said angst first I before in you. agitated. <laughs> With I believe she, in you. She was growing to feel agitated about how she was feeling. So confused, unconfident, and lost. She hadn't felt like this in years. Not since she ran away from home. Those memories started to creep out of hiding and began to trigger a need for alcohol. She was then interrupted when she walked into something solid, hurting her nose. Ow! Hey! She shouted. What? A low voice bluntly replied. Watch where you're going. She looked up to see a familiar stoic face. Her eyes narrowed. Why don't you watch where you're going? <laughs> Zoro scoffed at the lady's rude comeback and continued to walk in the direction of the kitchen. You need to eat. Twirly Brow just made lunch. Twirly Brow? Rose curiously follows Zoro a, f a few paces behind him to the ship's kitchen. Something smelled delicious. Maybe she can go along with this crazy dream just a bit longer. Hey, cook, what's for lunch? Zoro passively teased. Who let you in here? Ah! <laughs> I don't think I did that right. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Rose cringed as her personal space was suddenly invaded by a blonde man with beating hearts glowing in his eyes like an idiot. Whoa, I have my two favorite men in the same room right now? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> God damn it, now I gotta read this line. <laughs> I'm glad if you were not me. Oh, Jesus. I have people in this house. <laughs> You don't gotta read it, you could give it. You no, could I could do it. it. I'm an actor. You, just do the, you could just do the second half. Bro, I've read smut on this channel. I can say a like, phrase. I mean, do what you will, but it is your channel. Rosie Swan, how are you feeling? You look positively stunning this afternoon. Uh, are you twirly, <laughs> bro? <laughs> wait, Rosie. Wait, oh, like, wait, Rosie? The confused woman asked. Suddenly, the man's demeanor changed in a snap, and an angry vein pulsed in his forehead as the swordsman snickered at Rose's comment. Don't listen to that mothhead, Rosie Swan. He's no—he's a no-good bonehead. That only—that's only good for swinging those dumb swords around. A flash of silver flew throughout through the air, just missing Trolley Brow by a hair. Better watch what you say before I fillet you for. Lunch, idiot cook. Let me scroll. The girls are fighting right now. <laughs> both men... Yeah, both men growled at each other, baring teeth, and began swinging at each other in a comical cloud of kicks and swords. So, you two are called Mosshead and Twirly Brow? Zora and the cook suddenly froze, still grasping at each other's shirt collars. Wait a minute, I thought- I thought Sanji didn't fight with his hands. What the fuck? <laughs> the only exception of throwing hands he has is with Zoro. <laughs> and turned their heads towards the young woman with a conceding scarlet hair. Both- Cascading. Oh, did I not say that right? I thought I said cons cascading. You said conceding. Oh. Both boys gazed at her in awe while she laughed behind the counter, chewing on a sandwich. Monkey D. Luffy, Twirly Brow, Moss Head, you guys are so weird. A subtle tint grew across the boys' cheeks as the maiden laughed at their antics. Zoro dropped the hopeless cook on the floor and looked away from Rose's line of sight out of embarrassment. 
Meanwhile, the blonde man recovered quickly and regained his princely persona. He gently grabbed a hold of the beautiful maiden's hand and got on one knee. Oh, Rosie Swan, your laugh is a gorgeous symphony that rivals the angels. Please, let me serve you some tea to accompany your lunch. I want, I want Sanji for Valentine's Day. What the fuck? <laughs> you can have him. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I'll have Sanji, and then you you can have a uh, you can have Ace. <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna. <laughs> okay, we're good. <laughs> what, what? Did you want Zora? I really thought you were gonna say Shanks. <laughs> I was like, I was like a little scared. Oh. <laughs> Why you don't want Shanks? Yes, but I don't want. <laughs> that man drinks a lot. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> I was like, what's the problem? And you like them. <laughs> wow, what a gentleman you are, Twirly. She grinned. Don't call me Rosie, though. Sanji, at your service, my darling. Sanji? Well. Blood then suddenly dripped from the blonde's nose at the sound of the woman merely saying his name. Oh, brother. <laughs> it's like the fucking Sp Spongebob fish. It's like, oh, brother, this guy stinks! <laughs> oh, that's all I'm gonna hear. <laughs> Just so someone draw Sanji, I mean, Zoro as the fish. Yeah, <laughs> someone please. Just give that fish the three swords and, like, the moss-colored hair. <laughs> mm-hmm. Zoro felt as if he could vomit at any second. This was the second time he's heard Rosie laugh since he'd met her. It was a typical feminine laugh, but she could see when she could do this squeal when she caught her breath. It was unique. However, the whole picture of Rose and the cook was aggravating. Lunch! <laughs> the floor began to shake as a stampede of hungry pirates suddenly came in running. The door busted open, knocking Zoro to the floor as Luffy, Chopper, and Usopp came barreling in and immediately feasting on sandwiches like a bunch of animals. Hey, morons! Save some for the ladies! <laughs> Sanji angrily shouted, rolling up his sleeves and landing a, wait, landing a punch on each one of their heads. I thought he doesn't fight with his hands! <laughs> We're just gonna ignore it for now. Yeah. I mean, I guess it'd just be weird just to bonk them with your shoe. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just uh, tap them on the head with their foot. Yeah. Bing bang. <laughs> just bonk. <laughs> Monkey pirates? I missed all of that. Rose chatted amongst the crew. Amongst the crew members as she sipped hot, comforting tea, courtesy of Sanji. Wow. I really was knocked out. Hey, Rosie. Tell us about yourself. Usopp said with a kind smile. The straw hats sat around the table, enjoying their lunch and fascination with their new guest. Why? <laughs> what a question, Rosie. Rosa shrugged, feeling quite the opposite about herself. There isn't much to tell. That blast you casted at Luffy and Usopp when you woke up? The raven-haired archaeologist chimed in. What was that? I'm interested to know how you did that. Oh, that. She sighed and crossed her arms behind her head as she stared at the ceiling. Should she tell them? Eh, what are they gonna do anyway? This is just a weird dream after all. I need a dumb devil fruit. <laughs> hey, me too! Luffy cheered through a mouthful of meat. Huh? You? Rose raised an eyebrow. Uh huh. The captain smiled as he stretched his cheeks in a f into a funny face. I ate the gum gum fruit and now I'm a rubber man. Gum gum fruit? Rose couldn't believe it. Her hazel eyes grew as she witnessed the boy's arms stretch across the table, snagging more bread. Unbelievable. You ate that? She asked in disbelief. <laughs> yep. He giggled. Ha <laughs> Suddenly, the scarlet woman threw her head back in laughter, making the rest of the crew pause and stare at her. She gained her composure after a few moments and wiped a tear from her eye. That's hilarious. You really pissed off my father years ago. Hmm? How come? He collected devil fruits. Rose chuckled. He desperately was looking for that one. To think I'm here with the one who ate it. 
There was something about the air of the crowd of rookie pirates that felt oddly relaxing. It was at least a good distraction from her current mental crisis, but in the back of her mind, she was telling herself she couldn't com completely let her guard down. They were pirates, after all. Maybe she could use this moment to give them a warning of what she's capable of, just in case they try anything funny. I ate the Han Han fruit, she grinned, reaching for Luffy's hand. Let me show you- Oh shit, we're gonna get our can cut off. <laughs> Zoro's eyes curiously looked towards the odd woman, seeing her, seeing her reaching for his captain. He rapidly stood on his feet and pointed a blade at her throat. Don't, he coldly interrupted. The crew gasped at the turn of events. Zoro? Nami interjected, trying to stop the altercation. Just what do you think you're doing? Rose continued to calmly sit unfazed by the sharp sword threatening close to her neck. She looked up at Zoro with a smirk, making him angry. I already know what her power is, he explained. She can cross into the spirit plane. She took me there herself. Huh? The crew shouted. Some spitting out their drinks. I feel like that's a new shop thing. He's he's like that. Who's <laughs> not the kind of guy that spits out his water when he's surprised? <laughs> Do you think he like spits out on a stream or like the mist? I think it's the mist. Him and him and Luffy do the mist thing. His dark eyes. Yeah. <laughs> and then Chopper does the fucking like the sprint. Wait, not the. Not the miss, like the straight shot. <laughs> <laughs> His dark eyes continued to cut into Rose's soul. He could see right through her and was not about to let this woman put his captain in danger. How dare you threaten our crew? Because who do you think you are? What's wrong? What do you mean? Rose innocently replied. Cut the crap, Zoro s snapped. I don't care about our encounter last night. I won't let you play us for a fool. You seem like a bunch of fools to me! Rosa smiled and disappeared. It was the same state Zoro was in when she first laid eyes on him at the pub in Mocktown. His intense look, his unwavering stance. He looked so goddamn hot. I mean, she sighed, refusing to let herself sh show weakness. Ma said, You can't blame me for being wary of your crew. To the swordman's surprise, his sword began to levitate out of his hands. It slowly rotated and pointed directly between his eyes. Wh what? Rose glanced around the room. Usopp and Chopper hugged each other, shivering in fear. The others watched this display of power in awe. She continued her exclamation. You expect me to think I'm safe here? Zoro, Rose, lower your swords. Bolt stopped and looked over towards the boy in the straw hat. He sat back in his chair with his feet up on the table. He sat covering his eyes as a mischievous smile. She's not a threat! Luffy, you don't understand- It's fine! Luffy flicked up his hat. She's part of our crew, after all. Huh? Rose looked at the boy with severe confusion. No, I'm not. No, she's not. Zoro assured. Sure she is. Then he stood up on his feet and paced around the table while staring at the woman's bandaged arm. He stood confidently face to face with the mysterious woman. Aren't you? You said you joined us in to find the Sky Island. What is he doing? She wondered as Luffy studied her expression. He had eyes that glowed with such innocence that it was almost unsettling. I can't read this guy. Well, if he doesn't know how to read, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> he's like that fucking Does meme. Do you not know how to read? I know, he's Jared, 19, never learned how to read. <laughs> Does Rose know how to read? I, I don't know, I mean, she was brought up like... Well, well she can't read him. Oh, that's what you meant. I was like, well, she brought up higher class, but you know, women, they don't like women knowing shit, so maybe not. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, true, but damn. I'm sorry. Anyway, back to One Piece. <laughs> Little funny pirates go haha. <laughs> then Luffy gave Rose a knowing look that she will never forget. Hands on his hips with no doubt in his mind. How is she supposed to feel safe if you're pointing weapons at her? 
We're supposed to have lunch together. This isn't how we greet our friends. The crew looked at each other, unsure of Luffy's statement, filling the room with an awkward silence. Oh, no. The voices! <laughs> <laughs> the anxiety began to creep under Rose's skin. The eyes in the room all fell on her. Need to leave. Need to get out of here. Unable to handle the atmosphere anymore, Rose decided to disappear once again. <laughs> Nox! The crew jumped in surprise as the woman faded away into thin air. She disappeared! <laughs> as the straw hats looked frantically around the room, Zoro stood in shock about what had transpired. He suddenly felt the chill down his spine, making him whip around to see the kitchen door quickly open and close, shut on its own. The hell? Rose paced, paced back and forth, scratching her arms against the battered floorboards of the Going Mary. The sun had that was once high in the sky was replaced with a rolling black haze. At least out here on the ship, there was no spirits to bother her, and she could, yeah, and she could have this place to herself. Her voice echoed, "This isn't a dream. This isn't one dis despicable dream." She bubbled, biting her lips. Her nails continued to dig at her skin. This was the longest she has ever been sober, for at least a year. She had to get off the ship as soon as she had the opportunity. She didn't feel the control she once had over herself anymore, and she couldn't stand it. Hey, ghost lady. Her body froze as she could hear a faded deep voice from somewhere. The annoying familiar deep voice. She looked over her shoulder to see a muscular silhouette roaming the deck. In the realm where the sun shone bright in the sky, Zoro waverly looked around the empty deck. Show yourself. I know you're out here somewhere. How irritating. What does she have to do to escape this guy? This is all his fault after all. She rolled her eyes and floated up to the crow's nest. Stay away from me, she said under her breath. She takes a seat on the wooden barrier getting a clearer view of the approaching shore. In the distance, a strange castle structure could be seen perching high on the cliff. What a relief! Land! As soon as they drop anchor, she'll make a run for it. She couldn't stay being around this crowd any longer. She couldn't stand feeling like this any longer. Whatever this was, whatever it was, it was a good glass of whiskey would surely cure it. My! That's quite a power you have. A soothing voice startled Rose's state of mind. Behind her, a curvy silhouette of a woman sat across from her. Robin, right? She asked. How can you tell I'm here? What do you want? Raven-haired woman only chuckled a response, then looked down at the, the wandering swordsman with a soft smile. He's looking for you, you know. You think I don't know that lady? Rose snapped. I have no intention of speaking to him, if that's what you're going to say. I have no, I have no business being on the ship. I know who you are, Rose. Rose's heart came to a drastic halt. You shut your mouth, she spat. Rose, Red Skelter, Robin answered, unfazed by the phantom's threat. A bounty of 150 million berries with no listed crime. Wanted alive. You have a death wish, lady? Rose's eyes began to glow a, a bleeding red, so f so f fiercely that they began to appear in front of Robin in the natural world. What's to stop me from killing you right now? You don't have to worry about- you have nothing to worry about, I assure you. Robin adjusted her legs so they were crossed, getting comfortable as she continued to watch the commotion below. Usopp returned to work on the damage to the ship with the help of Chopper, handing him nails and boards. Robin emerged from the kitchen with a map of Jaya in her hands, looking out towards the approaching north coast, with Sanji mindlessly praising her. And then there was the captain and his first mate, pacing around the ship and shouting for the girl who disappeared. They are good people, you know, she smiled. You would just... I would just like to know your story. I've heard plenty of rumors surrounding the woman wanted for no crime. An exclusive phantom that is impossible for anyone to catch. What exactly are you wanted for? What are you running from? Why should I tell you? Rose finally appeared again into the living. 
sitting hugging her knees as she watched the straw hat flag dance proudly in the sky. Raman's eyes then caught sight of the scratch marks scattered on Rose's arms. Because you are safe here, I promise. And I'm just supposed to believe you? I don't think I've heard- You don't think I've heard that at all before? Forget it. Rami could only look at the young woman who, with a disappointed expression. Land ho! Nami's voice echoed through the wind. Finally, land. Tell your captain I said thanks for the ride. This- Dude. This shit is gas, man. Which means good. I'm glad I've chosen this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I make such a good choices. Yeah, you did it. I'm, I would be, like... I don't know if it, the word is surprise. Probably not. I wouldn't be surprised if you like you just put like the ones that you really wanted to read and you just put it in a wheel of yourself. <laughs> and you're like, all right, I guess uh, we're running Zoro today. <laughs> you know what? You know what my mentality is. What? So what I do is literally the day before we record, I go, hmm. You know what? I'm gonna spend the day looking at fix. You know, make sure I got something to like. We got something to read. I've chosen something, you know, something, we have options, right? Yeah. And then I don't do that in maybe five to ten, maximum 30 minutes before we record, I'm, I'm <laughs> scrambling. <laughs> and that's, that's how things work. Yay, at least they do. But it goes well. <laughs> There's gonna be one day that where you forget to do that, and I'll be like, so, Jillian, what are we reading today? And you're like, oh. I found this Kung Fu Panda fanfiction. <laughs> yes. I would do that. Mm -hmm. I would 100% do that. Dude, we can read Deadplate. Huh? Actually, never mind. We can't read that, because a lot of the fix I find are mature. We're, we're, what? Deadplate. It's, it's a really good, like, it's like an indie horror. It was really good. I played it for the. It's, the oh, it's a game. It's a game. I was like, huh? Yeah, I kept flirting with the show. What are you on? Yeah, it was a good game. I, I kept flirting with Vincent. <laughs> Do you understand? I promise. <laughs> but, uh. But thank you for picking out this book, man. It, it was nice to go yeah, back to this author. It is. It was, it was quite nice. I feel like I, I, going back to the author is like going home for the weekend and seeing your family again, you know? It just gives like a warmth of like security and whatnot. I don't know, it feels nice. <laughs> but it's, it's time now. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping it lands on your choice because I would love to see you panic again. Oh my god! <laughs> I know How it's me. How dare you! <laughs> I know it's me, but it was so funny! <laughs> Alright, we, we have a lot on here. Let's see where it is. You know, maybe one of these days we could take something off. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> this is rigged! This is rigged! What do you mean? You this is me rigged! Bro, you this watch, is rigged! You watched me spin it! <laughs> this is rigged! It's rigged! How <laughs> fucking dare you! Oh, okay. Stop <laughs> manifesting! I'm not manifesting anything! The wheel You're did manifesting! This. I didn't see you look even hoping since last time we'd get my choice! Because <laughs> I thought it would be funny! And you know what? It is! <laughs> you know what? You know what? What? You <sighs> <laughs> yeah. Hold up. Yeah, Hold what? Hold up. About it? Let me, let me see my options. Cause you know what, maybe you- <sighs> Do you want to see the list? We have- Hold on. No, 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 Here's no. The There's things. a certain one I'm looking for. Alright, is it the Sanji x <laughs> Yes and no, actually. <gasps> I'm thinking we could finish the Law X Reader. <gasps> oh my god. We'll start recording right now. I'm kidding. <laughs> right now, in this middle of this recording? Yeah, in the middle of this recording. It's this part, and then you have to put- <laughs> You have to put slash- the law one. L yeah. Let me go. Wait, what are we? Chapter 25? Law crossed his arms and looked at what I found him, and <laughs> no, so no, did no, your no. boss. Both while sitting down next to each other while you looked at them a little pissed off. Alright, anyway. <laughs> <laughs>
All I did was pause it while you were still reading. <laughs> <laughs> did it? Did you catch a little bit? Yeah, it was like the Flaw and your boss were looking at each other with, and, and doing curse words under their breath, stopping the party in their tracks. <laughs> gotcha. Awesome. Yeah. I would have 100% continued. That, okay, that, there you go. Sneak peek to the, <laughs> the next wall button. <laughs> Watch it actually be the logs, reader, but who knows? It's your choice, man. No, I mean, I mean, it is my choice. It, it'll take one thing off the wheel, and then we could either read another logs reader, or we could read Sanji X reader, or we could literally find <laughs> someone else. Bro, are Marco? We gonna... Ace? We could even read Boa X reader. The way you phrase that made it sound like we're gonna read a Marco X Ace. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. Whatever we find. Okay. We did find a long kid. I mean, yeah, we're reading that right Which now, Which is surprising. Man. Maybe that's surprising, man. They're, they're really part of, like, a trio. Like, a law kid and Luffy. It makes sense that at least the, the two of them would be shipped together. I'm know, just saying, I'm just mean. saying. But, uh, alright, thank, <laughs> thank you for joining on this, man. I <laughs> really appreciate it. Um, yeah, no problem. No problem. Yeah, this was a good book. Make sure you check out the author in the description down below. Support their work and whatnot. Maybe you can- They're good work. They're good work. Yeah, they have a Sanji X-Reader that's really good, and they have a Law X-Reader that's really good, if you get to render out the- That's crazy. I didn't, what, what was that? I didn't say anything. Anyway. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, check out the playlist for all the other Wattpad book readings that I've done with other guests and whatnot. Included Minho. I don't know if it, I don't know if I want to shot at Minho now that I say it out loud. <laughs> I don't know, he made me read a fucking <laughs> Tung Fu Panda X reader. I don't wanna <laughs> Is that the is that the last one I read? Yeah, it's the last one that we read. So you so was... you're reading like Poe X reader? No, it's a fucking Master Shifu X reader. <laughs> No! <laughs> this is the fucking panda. Oh, I can't. I don't have the willpower anymore, man. I, you know what? I'm glad I'm giving you some 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 breaks. Yeah, I get to read good shit, and I get to minnow like what what garbage are we reading next? <laughs> but uh, but anyway, my name is Phoenix. That was Jolene, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.